first we had ICOs, then we had IEOs, now we have STOs, and some of you may need to see a doctor about that STD. The method for bringing cryptocurrencies to investors has changed throughout the years, and it's important to keep up. That's why we've invited Alex Nascimento, faculty member and co-founder of Blockchain at UCLA, to join us for a discussion on blockchain business applications and security token offerings. It doesn't sound sexy, but with us along for the ride, you can consider this interview foreplay. Which brings us back to those STDs. Seriously, see a doctor. And don't forget to practice safe listening for this episode number 438 of the Really Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition. Who's bad? All right, I got these ear condoms on. What What do I do now? <laughs> Listen carefully. Are your ears itching? <laughs> if you've got an itching or burning in your ears, then you might have a problem. Don't have sex in your ear holes, folks. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I was going for subtlety. Travis, <laughs> great for it. Welcome subtlety to the Subtlety is like, is like, you're like, you know, come on. Why does it hurt when I listen? <laughs> <laughs> we are the blockchain blockheads the crypto clowns and many of you are groaning right now and that's exactly what we're going for because here in the republic of bad cryptopia we're all about infotainment we want to bring you some of the best content about blockchain and the future of digital money but we want to have some fun because if you're not having fun doing what you're doing then maybe it's time to reevaluate what you're doing that sounds like a true thing what you doing? What am I doing is I am looking at this eToro website, Mr. Joe Com, badco.in forward slash eToro. And they have a ton of different cryptos you can trade and you can follow some of the best traders and see what they're doing. And I think that's a good idea. It's like, who are the best traders? Watch what they're doing. And then go do some research on the coins they're investing in and maybe see if that's something you might want to do. I think that's a pretty good, solid idea. And, um, yeah, go check it out. And if you do this, go to badco.in forward slash eToro. You can get $50 by signing up. Go through the process, fund your account with at least 50 bucks, buy some Bitcoin, then send us a message saying that you did it. And they, just follow the information there on badco.in forward slash eToro. It'll make it all work nice. And you could be like the millions and millions and millions of people that we wish listened to us. You just <laughs> like those people. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> someday they'll find us and they'll love someday. us we're glad you're here though and we've got some great content for you today so let's go ahead and jump into our feature interview <laughs> way back in what feels like an eternity ago mr travis wright we met a gentleman at world crypticon in las vegas that was last october it, it seems like years already, doesn't it? Because back, <laughs> back in the days of yore before the the big change <laughs> the big you went through the change the big change happened in the world yeah travis is going through the change you gotta go through the change <laughs> we met a gentleman who is an author and a faculty member at ucla he's the co-founder of blockchain at ucla where he lectures on blockchain business applications and security tokens in fact he's written a book called the sto financial revolution and stick around because you guys are going to be able to get a free copy of it his name is alex nascimento alex welcome to bad crypto hi everyone thanks joel thanks uh travis really appreciate the invitation it's a pleasure to be here yeah absolutely give us a little bit of your background a um, little bit more meat on what i already shared there so people understand who you are and what you're all about yeah so the quick intro um, is that i went to the anderson school for business school and then graduated in 2008 which we're all old enough here to remember 2008 not being the most fantastic time to graduate uh, ended up starting teaching at ucla taught strategy courses and marketing courses um, and always been in tech. So in 2017, we, the faculty at UCLA, together with some alums, 
uh, we're seeing a, a lot of hype and interest in Bitcoin. You, you know, remember early 17, Bitcoin was around 1,000 and scaling very fast. So as UCLA is one of the institutions who helped develop the internet, we thought that we should also have a blockchain course as we think uh, blockchain and crypto is revolutionary technology. So we put a program together and uh, started what was then the UCLA Blockchain Lab, which now evolved to Blockchain at UCLA as a student-led organization with over 300 members uh, sprawling all over campus. And I've been teaching this course since 2017. Uh, it's a non-technical course. It focuses on the business applications of blockchain for a wide variety of industries. Uh, such as, you know, healthcare, finance, real estate, so forth. And then in the search for finding a textbook, um, I couldn't find one. So we decided to write one and one that would help people dismystify blockchain and crypto, as well as understand how they can raise money on a blockchain uh, ecosystem through a fully regulated format something that, that it's fully compliant with the law, so you won't be deemed any kind of uh, problems with the SEC or a regulated securities offer. So so give give the folks, you know, the, the maybe the 10,000 foot view of a of an STO, right? We've talked about it. A lot of people know, but some of them have no idea. This is the first time they've ever heard this term, let's just assume. How would you explain this to them and why is it important? Yeah, so the great question. So uh, STOs stand for security token offerings, uh, which is an evolution of the most famous term ICO, initial coin offering. Um, as the SEC, and it's important for people all over the world to understand why the SEC is so important in this space, is because America and the, our last country here um, commands 40% of the bonds and equity market all around the world. So every institutional player, banks, private equities, VC firms that want to participate in that ecosystem end up looking to the SEC to see what are these guys saying because they are the regulators of 40% of four out of 10 trades. Mm. So the SEC told everyone, as we, as we all remember here, ICOs are bad, can't do ICOs right? ICOs are a unregulated securities offering. So you can't raise money through an ICO. So that crashed the market in, 2000, in early 2018, as we all can look back in history. Um, interesting enough, the, the, Obama juristic, uh, the Obama administration ended up creating a, a set of uh, frameworks that allow entrepreneurs to file for securities offerings uh, in a much easier and less bureaucratic way called the Jobs Act. And it's nothing with Steve Jobs, as some of my students may think. Uh, it's jumpstart of our business. So it's fully targeted for startups. And those, those frameworks inside the, uh, the securities regulation of the United States allows you to issue a security or raise money for your startup company or any other financial product as an investment contract in a much easier, less bureaucratic way. So all you're doing is you're creating an ICO or registering a digital form of an investment contract on a blockchain, right? And the whole beauty of it is that, as we know, smart contracts allow the automation and the proliferation of of that of that offering is it just though is it an ico with a different you know coat of paint on it uh i would like to say it's a, a regulated ico because you you know the subtitle of your book the sto financial revolution is how security tokens change businesses forever and you know for those of us who have been watching icos and ieos and stos and eieios we're like all right what's the next step in the evolution but you make it sound like the sto is the solution and it's here to stay 
Uh, and if that's the case, how does this change businesses forever? So uh, great question. So I'll give you, um, you know, a couple of uh, examples that I think are, are illustrative of, of the of the benefits. Um, so anything, according to the SEC and many regulators around the world, that encompasses a investment contract, right? And an investment contract can be anything. Um, it can be just a swap. You give me money, I will give you a paper written that I will pay you 10% interest in the end of the year. That's an investment contract, right? So anything that encompasses an investment contract is considered to be regulated by the SEC. So what securities token offering is that you can build any kind of financial product registered on a blockchain and then distribute that financial product offering all over the internet. So as an example, uh, my day job, aside from teaching at UCLA, I run a fund here called 7CC Blockchain Investments. And we're creating a financial product, which is a debt contract. Uh, you buy the token, and then over the course of five years, you receive dividends of that token, uh, which are uh, an equity and that structure. So, so that in itself could be utilized for a chain of pizzerias that wants to raise money from their audience that comes in regularly, for a startup that wants to raise uh, seed money, A rounds, B rounds, C rounds, or even large institutions. We've worked with some of the largest investment banks that are doing security tokens uh, pegged to real estate assets, such as like a REIT, a real estate um, investment trust. Mm. You know, we've, we've used this example in the past, and so I'm curious to have, hear what you think about it. But say, for example, back in you know 2001, instead of me buying the Apple Macintosh latest version for three grand, I had instead, you know, spent that three grand on Apple stock. I'd have been way better. I'd be way better off instead of actually buying their product, investing in their stock would have been way more intelligent. Now, how far away are we from, you know, security tokens combined with shares of stock within companies? How, how long until you think that merger is going to happen whenever I could then own a share of Apple and that becomes fungible, and I can actually use that and 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 transact with my Apple stock like it's a security token and buy stuff with it, and then my share of Apple slowly decreases until it's gone. Like how off, how long until we turn shares of a company into like a digital asset? Uh, I think that very soon. So a couple of evidences that are happening in the market is, for example, a security token. Is very close to what we have as a NASDAQ share, right? A NASDAQ share is just a digitized form of a share of an Apple share, like Microsoft share. So uh, one of the one of the things that we have been seeing happening in the market that's currently NASDAQ itself is offering a full fledged solution for companies to issue a security token from all the way from zero to one hundred. And it's not like in pilot program, it's on sale mode, right? I've been to a few of the NASDAQ um, sales pitches that they're doing all over the world to investment banks and, and large corporations to issue a security token on the NASDAQ platform that is a blockchain platform. Hmm. That's going to revolution. That's where it's going to revolutionize it. When you can actually turn shares of a company into fungible tokens that I can go out and spend in the world, more people will come in and invest in stuff because the fact you're going to see, oh, look, oh, the Apple went up today. Oh, look at all my money. It, it increased today. Oh, and so now I have more money to spend if I need to. It's like, I think it would be very uh, advantageous and exciting for the financial market to evolve in that way. Yeah, not only the financial market, but hey, the you know, a vast majority of businesses in America are small businesses, right? And I'll give you an example. Right now, the SEC is through the final rounds of reviewing the updates to the Jobs um, Act, 
which will allow a small business to do crowdfunding and issue a crowdfunding security token up to five million bucks. That's wow. significant cash. Right? That's revolutionary can- because you can't just you can't do that right in, in the current models. Um, there's no way it's like, it seems like the rules are for the big boys to play. If you have a lot of money, you can play and it makes it really challenging for, you know, mom and pop business to raise money. So what, what does that look like then? Is that, will that be through a platform, um, that the SEC has said, okay, you can do these registered, you know, security token raises here, or is it going to be open to lots of different platforms as long as they follow the rules? Uh, the latter, right? It's going to be open and it's already open. So Reg CF is an exemption to securities offering. So think about this, right? If you want to go the full-fledged program and do an IPO, you're going to have to find a bank, an underwriter, pay millions of dollars, end up getting listed on a New York Stock Exchange and do the full-fledged thing. That is um, impossible to be done by a small business owner, like you said. But then under the Jobs Act, you could file for Reg CF, which stands for Regulation Crowdfunding, uh, which originally had a cap of a million and seventy thousand dollars. The challenge there is like a million, although seems like a good amount of cash, is not that amount of money for a startup or for a small business in the long term. So what uh, the SEC is currently doing is is finalizing the reviews to uplift that limit to five million. So you could issue a security token and sell it internally to your clients the people that come to your pizzeria or the people that believe in your startup and raise five million bucks. Um, I think that's going to be revolutionary. <laughs> so it's it's sort of like taking crowdfunding plus the ICO, doing a little mix up, mashing it, and then making it so it's acceptable to the SEC. Yes, that's one part of it. The, the main part that I personally believe in uh, and many other people, institutional investors believe in it is the automation of the smart contract right mm-hmm. so it, it shocks people when i go around you know the world talking about uh that in the united states and some of the listeners might might not know this and might shock them as well there's only about three thousand companies out of all the companies in the united states that pay dividends to their shareholders why is that because it's amount of paperwork to pay dividends, right? You have to do revenue splits, revenue shares, send checks to people, keep a balance of who owns what. Uh, so it's it's extremely costly for a business to pay dividends. Only big companies can do that. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of like and that's also sort of like the stock buyback kind of things that they're doing, right? So they have this big, big, big stash of cash, and instead of saving it for a rainy day, they're giving it back to their investors. And then coronavirus happens, and then they need to ask the government for a big bailout. Exactly, right? Yeah. So, so if I'm a shareholder, I would like to get dividends, right? I, I'm, I'm in thesis, I'm, I'm a, a partial owner of that company. If that company makes a profit. I should be entitled to that uh, partial profit. So like like any other smart contract, a a security token is a representation of that investment contract stored on the blockchain. You could code in the smart contract and the security token the payout of dividends of your five pizzerias. Automatically. Automatically. Man, that would be so nice. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Lemons yeah. and squeezy. Is this so basically the same? Um, so I, I've come across a couple platforms. One of them is Start Engine. Another one is Micro Ventures. So basically the uh-huh. same type of regulation that allows you to invest as little as a hundred dollars or so, you know, to buy shares in a company without being a qualified investor. This is the same idea, right? That's being applied to token offerings. Yes. So there are actually three key um, types of exemptions in the Jobs Act that I think are important for the listeners. Uh, one is regulation crowdfunding, which is now being lift. The limit of how much money you can raise is being lifted from a million and seventy thousand to five million. Uh, the other exemption is regulation D five hundred six, 
which allows the issuer of the token to raise as much money as they can from only accredited investors. So angel funds, VCs, private equities, or anyone that's wealthy enough to, to prove that they can invest. And then the big aha is uh, the regulation A plus or reg A. Uh, there are two tiers in it. But the, the new update is going to allow companies to make an offering to anyone, like you mentioned, through these platforms or via their own platform and email list. Uh, up to $75 million every 12 months. So every year, you could, if you have, like in our example here, a successful pizzeria all over Southern California, you could raise up to $75 million every year. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk about a, a specific area of your book, and you just mentioned it. You talked about Reg A+. Plus. And in your book, you talk about how the pathway is being unlocked. And you also talk about how block stack and props are leading the way in this area. So you want to maybe cover that because that's one of the, the interesting areas of that's kind of the meat when you're getting into talking about the security tokens in the U.S. For sure. So the Jobs Act was there before, you know, we became that's like 2012, 2013. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right. Probably, probably before uh, most people knew what crypto was. That regulation is being applied to crypto and to securities offerings because blockchain allows you to utilize that framework to reach a wider pool of, of potential investors, right? Uh, and that's the automation. That's, that's the whole technology behind it. Now, through this entire time until July... 10th of 2019 last year uh the sec did hadn't approved any token offering ico eio ei whatever o uh that would uh would be exempt under reg a plus right and that was a whole push of the industry including myself including howard marks from start engine uh that you guys mentioned and a lot of other um, executives in the industry was for the SEC to give it out for one of these token offering cases, the ability to do a Reg A plus, which is sell it to anyone, sell it to your grandmother, sell it to like, you know the guy who cleans the pool at your house. You don't need to be an accredited investor to participate in this. And then two, not only one, but two were approved on that day one block stack and one props coin from uh, our dear friend Adi Seidman uh, in New York. And, and they, they've been going through the motions of uh, getting a Reggae Plus approved for their token and constantly raising more money. I, I just read that a D from props raised uh, additional cash. So the real question then is for people who are thinking, whoa, I can raise money this way. How does somebody go about it? What are the barriers? Some of the barriers are obviously, you know, you need a little bit of cash to put this together. Uh, regulation crowdfunding is is very simple, the paperwork. Uh, you, If you feel comfortable, you could probably do it yourself. You don't need a lawyer. Uh, or you could use some of these platforms. Start Engine is a good platform. Uh, Republic is another platform. You mentioned a couple of different platforms. There are a lot of platforms out there that utilize the framework of regulation crowdfunding to access uh, this ability to raise up to $5 million. If you're going to do a Reg D and you're just going to go to accredited investors, then most likely you could use some of these platforms like Polymath. Um, is a good one. They're, they're creating the Polymash token, which is an incredible piece of technology. Um, and if you want to do a Reg A+, Plus, you probably need a little bit more robustness and a legal team to make sure that you, know, you are creating the right investment contract, your private placement memorandum is, is bulletproof. Uh, I guess nothing is bulletproof, but you know, to the best of its ability. Um, and and then you're at a vast cheaper investment than doing anything close to an IPO, and that cost is getting cheaper and cheaper 
as we move along because as, as we can all think, you know, it's paperwork. So the more lawyers end up doing these, these become commoditized. And then you have that paperwork registered on a blockchain. But there are a lot of uh, different um, security token exchanges around the world um, that are popping up. I like very much T0 here in the United States. Um, I like very much Mercado Bitcoin in Latin America is the largest um, exchange in Latin America, a good partner of ours. They have over 1.8 million users uh, and list um, tokens that, that are analogous to, to securities um, under their jurisdiction. There are exchanges in, in Switzerland. There's iStock in Asia. There is Diginax, there's Archax in London. This is happening. If you have an idea for an investment, you could use a security token to reach an audience that you physically wouldn't be able to do so. Because traditionally, we've all been in startups. You have to knock on the door of people in paper, paper and pan and convince them to give you a check against a share of your company. I want to ask you this, Alex. So, do you think do you think that these STOs are a solution to the I would say the uh, maybe the glut of U.S. companies leaving America because you know how uh, stringent the SEC has been on blockchain companies. We've seen a lot of innovation leaving and going to some of these different places that you even mentioned in your book. Gibraltar, they're going to Switzerland, they're going to Singapore, they're going to Costa Rica, they're going to some place in the Caribbean, maybe the Cayman Islands. They're leaving America because it's been so hard to even have a, it's like, you know, there's this huge, all these huge lawsuits now that's going on because, oh, all these companies sold unregistered, you know, sold unregistered, unaccredited investors. And so now it's all this BS that's going down. And then a lot of companies are just like, well, screw it. I'm not going to build it in America. I'm leaving. So do you think that the STO is the solution to stop that? I think it's one of the solutions. Uh, we've been in this business for a little bit over than three years as, a, as an investment company. And we helped um, dozens of clients that were in, in that situation you were, you were describing. How can I issue a token? Uh, if I can't do it in the United States. So we help dozens of clients do it uh, in Cayman, in Singapore, in Switzerland. And that was a trend, right? People weren't seeing the light in the United States and how to do it in the United States. Uh, but since July of last year, um, that has changed. And I, I, like I mentioned, I very much like the guys from T0. I think they do a fantastic job. And I think that they're, they're prone to be one of the biggest exchanges in the world, uh, and it's going to be here in the United States, right? And they are fully compliant. They have broker-dealers, ATSs. Howard Marks is another example. Republic is another example. Polymath is another example. Coreconks is another example. So they're flourishing all these different startups. They're going to help entrepreneurs issue security tokens and trade them, which is another great point of a security token like, if, if I buy a share of a startup in my angel group uh, here at Tech Coast Angels is one that I'm, that I'm affiliated with, uh, and I want to sh sell that share, I, it's, a, it's a headache. But now with a security token, you can go on the secondary market, T0, Mercado Bitcoin, iStocks, Diginex, Archax, and sell it to someone who's who has done the KYC and AML approval anywhere in the world. I don't need to know mm -hmm. that person. Oh, that's handy. How long do you think it'll be before we see some real widespread adoption and we can say this is now the thing? Uh, I would say that, you know, in the next 12 to 24 months, you're going to see a lot more of uh, institutional grade products coming out right it took uh to, for an institutional player it's hard to jump into something that is unregulated because frankly you know if you're a fund manager you want your cushy job right you want your your bonus and and your big salary 
So now if you lose money in an unregulated offering, you're going to lose your job. So now that the, the, the regulation is a lot more clear, the SEC is becoming a lot more friendly and accustomed to security tokens, digital securities like the SEC prefers to call it. Um, I think that that's going to that's gonna come out. And a lot of financial products, such as derivatives, debt structures, uh, equities, swaps of all kinds, are going to end up becoming these security tokens because they're a lot cheaper to manage and sell. So interesting. So if someone wants to get started, they can go check out your book. You've got a book called uh, STOs, How They Can Revolutionize the Finance Industry. Want to talk a little bit about the book and then how our listeners can maybe snag a copy of that bad boy? Yeah, so um, we're, we're sharing with your listeners here the code for them to get a free book and the URL where they can get it. The book is available on Amazon. Uh, we've been donating the book. Mostly it's it's a dollar on Amazon. It, all the proceeds go to UCLA. Um, but our idea is to educate people and dismystify, right? One of, a, one of the key things that we have been doing for the past two years is go to companies and people say, oh, is that close to an ICO? Am I going to go to jail? Right? And we've seen that from, from people who are not in the industry. So one of our main goals is to educate people that you could use blockchain, you can create your crypto, you can create your stable coin, you can create your debt structure product, uh, you can create shares for your startup or existing business and do it in a fully regulated way and potentially in the very short term, do it internationally. Not only listed in the US, but also listed in other countries around the world um, which Asia is a place that people are very hungry for alternative investments. And with negative interest rates like we've been seeing lately post uh, during this COVID time, um, I foresee that people are going to have to find alternative investments to get their money going or else you're just, you know, better store cash underneath your mattress. Yeah, I don't want to put it in there. I might forget that I put it there and then, you know, sell the mattress, the money gets stuck to it and somebody else ends up with it and then I'm pissed off. Plus you got a big lump and then it like hurts your back while you're yeah, sleeping. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. <laughs> I like to sleep on my gold, you know. Yeah. Yeah. My back, I feel yeah. like I'm bucks. So the book is called The STO Financial Revolution. The website, the stofinancialrevolution.com. Of course, go to the show notes also for this episode to find the link. And uh, you are being very generous, Alex, giving away a, um, a PDF copy of it, an ebook. I mean, certainly you guys can go support um, and purchase the book at Amazon and the proceeds go to UCLA. And it's real easy to get a free copy of the ebook at thestofinancialrevolution.com. Go to the website, and there's a really short survey with just a few questions that, uh, you know, Alex is doing a little bit of research on knowledge on STOs. And when you get to the end of that survey, put in this code, STOBOOK-BAD, all capital letters, STOBOOK-BAD. How many questions in the survey here, Alex? Five. Five. Okay, there you go. Easy. Yeah. No, it's yeah, interesting. If you, have Amazon, if you have Kindle Unlimited, I guess it's zero dollars for you there too. So that's something. That you, or if you just have a dollar, go get it on Amazon. It's easy. Give me yeah. A dollar. Uh, one last yeah. question for you, Alex. Is, is your um, are you related to Satoshi Nascimento? Uh, I wish. I wish because. Uh, <laughs> I would have the keys to like thousands of Bitcoin. Alex Nakamoto or something? Alex Nakamoto. I think that should be like my handle. I'm going to create an Alex Nakamoto on uh, on Instagram. <laughs> Very good. Great chat with you. Thank you so much for coming on and edumacating us. Thank you so much, Joel and Travis. Fantastic work. Uh, I applaud the work you guys are doing. I've been following for you a while and it was a, a true pleasure to be here and thank everyone who's listening um, for being with us. We appreciate the applause. We, we live for it. Now we'll take a bow. Thank you. Thank you very much. 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 How about that, Mr. Joe Com? The STO, 
financialrevolution.com. You can use the free code STO book dash B A D all caps. And then I think you get the book. You get the, uh, you get the book. Stobook dash bad is what it is. Stobook dash bad. That's true. Bad. Mm -hmm. Good. You'll probably use the password just bad, but we want to make it difficult. Yeah, make it make sure you're paying attention. Of course, it's is also listed the link and the code on our website and our show notes at badco.in forward slash four three and an eight. We've got a lot of great stuff coming your way. Want to give a shout out to our friends at Divi. They're taking early signups for their new digital finance ecosystem. They're going to offer you crypto debit cards, instant bank accounts, poof like that. It's like instant rice only mm. bank account and fiat to crypto on and off ramps right in the wallet. If you want to be first in line to get your hands on these services, go over to wallet.diviproject.com. Dot org. Put your email in. That puts you right there in line and appears that some big things are happening over at Divi. Wallet.diviproject.org. What else you got, Mr. Travis, right? I got nothing. I got nothing except great content for you folks right here. This is good. Now? When you get, when you get the freaking, okay. you know, the, the, the professor at UCLA who's talking about blockchain business applications, security tokens, he's... He's on the cutting edge. That was good stuff right there. And I uh, hope you found some value in that. And if not, well, just listen to not one of the other episodes we have. You might some, find some value there. <laughs> you know, there's a big back catalog, too. A lot of you might be new listeners, and we've been doing this for over three years now. And if you are subscribed to the show, wherever you are, just kind of scroll back and look for, you know, some of the other names that might jump out at you or titles that you think are interesting. That's the way I do it. When I find a podcast, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to kind of scroll through. And t- oh, that one right there. That looks interesting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you never know what you can dig up from the archive, but we've got hundreds of hours of content out there and most of it is okay. Yeah, there's uh, I would go back and listen to the interviews because a lot of those are timeless. Uh, the news is dated because it's news, right? That's stuff that happened that week. But the interviews are normally pretty timeless. And uh, there's, we've had some spectacular interviews, these people that we've had the opportunities to chat with that, have, that are just amazing people. So. Go back there and, and, and do some of that and listen to some of those shows and maybe even review the podcast if you've been a long-time listener and have not done that before. You should probably review us. Yeah, what's taking you so long? Well, we'll wrap the show up the way we always do. Travis will play the harmonica. Oh, man, I lost my harmonica. Oh. We'll wrap the show up the way we always do. Travis will play his banjo. Oh, man, I did not have that. We'll wrap up the show the way we always do. Travis will play his ukulele. Oh, Travis will play his ukulele? Yeah. Wait. Now see what I've done? Travis can play his his sound force. Mm, stay back. Who's bad? The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto, LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoins and and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.